Welcome to shop video number one for Engineering 153. I'm John Waddick, uh, presently chairman of the department, and I'm going to be working with Don Howard, who's a master craftsman, to go over this series of videos for you so that you know how to use the shop, all the tools, and to do it very safely. So in today's video, we're going to look at three things with shop safety. Number one, attire. In other words, what's the proper things to wear at the shop? Number two will be what is the proper behavior so that you keep yourself safe and others around you uh, from getting hurt. And finally, we'll talk about the things that you should do to inspect your work area. All right, welcome to video number one, General Shop Safety. I'm John Waddock from the Engineering Department, and with me is Don Howard, who's got several decades of experience in machine shops, both educationally uh, and in industry. So Don's going to be going over most of the things, and I'm just going to be here to kind of learn along with you. So first thing, Don, uh, is tar as far as safety is attire, what people wear uh, to the shop and should be prepared to have with them. So the first thing is people will see that I've got glasses over my glasses. Okay. So my glasses are not rated. So if unless you've gone to your prescription eyewear um, provider and gotten specially made glass that has a Z82 rating, you will have to wear safety glasses over your glasses. Obviously, if you don't wear glasses at all, you need safety glasses, preferably with some side protection as well. So anytime you see me in these movies, I'm going to be wearing this even if machines aren't operating, and that's going to be the rule. Anytime you're in the shop, you have to be wearing safety glasses. Don, how about uh, clothing? All right. Um, I've got short sleeves here. You've got long sleeves. All right. In the shop, preferably, you would want to have the short sleeve attire like John has. All right. Because you, a long sleeve, like I have, has more tendency to get caught in the machine. All right. Where a short sleeve, all you have here is your arm and your hands, um, hair, which won't get caught in the machine. Um, loose clothing, it, go, go, it leads us into the next phase where we, get, we talk about loose clothing. Um, can get caught into a spinning uh, spindle, uh, chips, long stringers that come off of a lathe, things that you will get familiar with as you work in the machine shop. You'll find these other hazards starting to appear. Okay, so along with those lines, Don, you know, you don't want loose clothing uh, on your arms. If you do happen to wear long sleeves on a given day, I presume rolling them up would be, you know, sufficient. Um, now, there's some other things that could get caught in the machine. Um, jewelry? Yes, you don't want to wear jewelry, um, necklaces, hair ties. Uh, if you're going to use hair ties, they've got to be hair ties to pull your hair to the back, all right? Uh, but you don't want dangly jewelry. Anytime you're going to be reaching into a machine or you may be bending over something, you always stand a chance of that jewelry getting caught into a machine, especially on your fingers, you know, rings. Rings. All right, so, so no jewelry. If you have long hair, like Don said, you have to pull it back. Uh, you could tuck it under a hat. Um, I don't have that problem, um, but many of you have beautiful hair. So you have to think about, once these machines are on, they're built to, to cut metal, and they're gonna, not going to have any trouble cutting through flesh and bone. So these machines are unmerciful. So you don't want to get caught or get something caught and get pulled into a machine. Now, Don, we've talked about uh, upper body. Um, how about lower body shoes and, and what you should wear? I mean, long pants. Okay. Um, you want to wear a good soled shoe, hard soled shoe while you're in the shop. You don't want to wear open toed shoes. Um, what will happen is if you wear open toed shoes or soft soled shoes, you walk on chips. Chips can cut through the soles. Uh, chips will get on your feet, get caught in your, in your feet, and you'll cut yourselves. All right? Um, there's droppage issues. Sometimes you want to have safety shoes um, for the most part because if you drop a heavy object, we're working with vices in here to weigh up in the ranges of 50 pounds or better. So if you happen to drop something, it'll crush you. Pants. You want to wear pants, no shorts. Pant it's another thing with chips. You've got air hose. People use air hoses to clean their machines. Uh, you don't want those chips getting blown into your, into your skin where you can get cut or you get a stringer or something off the lathe. It may cut you. All right. 
All right. Uh, so if you haven't been in a machine shop, what you're going to find is that there's a lot of things that fly off of these machines. And many of them are very extremely sharp. They could be coming off at high speeds. Um, so you want to be covering your lower body. Okay. Uh, sneakers are the bare minimum that we would accept in the, the machine shop. No sandals, you know, no flip-flops. You know, you're not going to the beach here. You're in a hazardous area. The other thing, Donna, sometimes students like to wear hoodies. Uh, why, why is that going to be a prohibited thing? Okay, hoodies. Basically, they're warmer weather or cold weather clothing, and so it's there to keep you warm. So you're going to have the long sleeves. You're going to have the dangly ties. You're going to have the hoods over top, which are all obstruction and obtrusive to working around a machine. All right. So one of those strings could get caught. Pull your head in there. You can get a, a terrible facial cut. All right, so those are, that's, those are things with the attire, what you should wear. Remember, safety glasses, I mean, most instructors aren't even going to let you into the, into the uh, shop without safety glasses. They're going to send you right down to a, a hardware store to get them. I'd like to just spend a few uh, moments here reviewing what Don has said about proper shop attire. Okay, first off, you have to have safety glasses. Remember, if uh, you just have regular eyewear prescribed by your doctor, that's not going to be sufficient. You'd have to still put rated safety glasses over your glasses. No one is going to be in the shop without safety glasses. You need to wear short sleeves. If on occasion you have long sleeves, they have to be rolled up. Sleeves are something to get easily caught into a machine. You don't want that to happen. No jewelry. Okay, no rings, no necklaces, obviously. Uh, long dangly earrings would even be a bad idea. You need to tie back your hair. Make sure that it's not dangling. So if you lean over the machine, you don't want your beautiful locks pulled in, pull your face and scalp in there, potentially even pulling all your hair out. Okay, so tuck that back into a, a, a hair tie, or you could use a hat to, uh, to tuck it under. Long pants are required. You're going to have hot and sharp chips coming off machines. You need to protect your legs with long pants. Closed toe shoes. Remember, no flip-flops, uh, no sandals. Uh, sneakers are the bare minimum, uh, but it is highly recommended that you get a, a leather shoe with a good uh, solid uh, sole to it. That would be preferable to sneakers. Lastly, no hoodies, okay? Uh, you don't want to have any hoodies because the, the drawstrings, the hood, the sleeves can all pull you into the machine. If you wear a hoodie, you're just going to have to take it off. Um, now, behavior. Now, you don't come into the shop ready to have your lunch, right? No eating or drinking. There's obviously things that are hazardous in the shop, metal chips and so forth. Uh, so there's not going to be any eating. Chewing tobacco, that's out. Um, no smoking, obviously. Now, how about being attentive? And can students uh, listen to music with their ear earphones on, Don? Uh, no, that is not a great practice in the shop. Uh, you want to be able to hear your machine. You want to be attentive to what's going on around you at all times because you never know where it's. Okay, because sometimes the machines will be talking to you. There's, you know, uh, a squeal might come up that tells you to do something. You have earphones on, you're oblivious to that. Someone may want to tell you something. Okay, so no earphones. Uh, obviously, no running around. If you're in a hurry, you don't run in the shop. There's, there's no horse play. There's no playing around. Uh, this is not a playground, Don. Uh, these machines can seriously hurt you or even kill you. Um, if you happen to trip or fall, there's a lot of sharp corners on these. They don't look sharp, they don't feel sharp, but we're talking metal, it's hard. You hit your head against it or you fall against it with elbow, it can lace you open. So you don't want to be horsing around in the shop. Okay. All right, one other thing is you're never to operate a machine, either here on our um, uh, Brighton campus over or at the Applied Technology Center if there is not an instructor in that room, right? So. In fact, that's a practice. I believe it's an OSHA regulation. You're not supposed to operate a machine alone. Is that true? Uh, it is a very poor practice to operate a machine by yourself. Um, there has been many incidences where individuals operating equipment by themselves has gotten hurt and not got the medical attention they've needed. So, 
So the main thing is if there's nobody around to help you, your screams for help will go uncalled and you will be suffering for quite a while. Do not operate a machine alone and do not operate a machine without an instructor present. I'd like to review quickly the proper shop behavior that was just discussed in the video. There's no eating or drinking. Uh, don't bring your coffee in. Uh, don't bring a taco in. Don't bring powdered donuts. Don't bring anything in to eat. Uh, there's a lot of hazardous oils, chips, and so forth uh, that you could ingest, not to mention uh, spilling things in is, uh, around the shop is not going to be acceptable. No chewing tobacco. Hopefully you don't chew tobacco. That's obviously something that's not good for your health. There's no smoking anywhere on the MCC campuses, so it's not going to be allowed here uh, in the shop as well. No earphones. Uh, you need to be attentive to what people are going to say, instructions by your instructor. Uh, your machine may be making sounds that tell you to stop it. Okay, something's not right. You have to have all your senses uh, in the game when you're in a machine shop. Um, There's a very dangerous place. You need eyes and ears uh, to be at the ready. Uh, no running around. You could easily slip, hit something, run into someone, push them into a machine. A lot of bad things. No running. Uh, no horseplay, no practical jokes uh, in, in a machine shop. We're talking about highly dangerous uh, machines and tooling. Um, you need to be uh, working in a professional manner anytime you're in a shop. You're never to operate a machine alone. Uh, that's for your own safety. Uh, there was about a year ago um, a, a student from another college who was operating a machine at night, got pulled into the machine, uh, and I believe bled out and died by, some, by the time anyone found her in the morning. You're not to ever operate a machine without an instructor present at MCC. You get caught doing that, and uh, you will not, you, you're not going to be allowed to use our machines for uh, an extended period of time. Our next area is going to be inspecting your work area. Don, before you get into uh, the machine and start the machine, there's some things you should do to inspect the area. Okay? Could you go over some things, starting with like the floor and the general area? You want to check your general housekeeping when you come up into the machine shop. You want to see, you're going to look at the, uh, the condition of the machine when you get up there. If there's something broken or something worn, you want to take care of it because these items could cause damage, uh, uh, fracture, uh, broken parts could fly off and you could get hurt. All right. Your floor, your floor wants to be clean and slept green. Oil on the floor, chips on the floor. It's like having kitty litter if, or, or dirt on your floor or, or dust on your floor. You can skate across it. You know, you get uh, wet and oily feet. All right, so these things are all important. Housekeeping is very important in the shop. So it's not just a matter of having a, a place look nice. Having it messy and so forth can create some uh, safety hazards. Your instructors are not going to let you leave lab each day until you properly clean. But before you get into a machine, in case someone did not do it before you, you need to inspect the area. Uh, some other things... Um, if there's anything questionable with the machine, you'll want to let your instructor know. So if there's any question in your mind whatsoever whether the machine is, is ready to go, you ask your instructor. Just a quick review on inspecting your work area. First thing is you want to make sure you report any broken equipment to your instructor. If there's any frayed wires, broken knobs, handles, um, anything that looks wrong to you, uh, report it to your instructor. They'll know what to do. You need to ensure that the floor is clean. Okay, um, If it's oily, has debris on it, it's something you could slip, hit your head. You could be knocked unconscious or worse. And you have to be aware of others that are around you in the shop. Okay, uh, You want to make sure that, that you don't approach them in a way that's going to startle them and maybe cause them harm. Uh, you also have to be cognizant of any actions that they are doing so that you don't put yourself in harm's way. Don didn't mention this, but anytime you get an injury in the shop, no matter how minor, you need to uh, report it to your instructor and get uh, proper treatment, even if it's something that you think is nothing um, for insurance reasons uh, so that you could be potentially covered by the school's insurance and your own insurance, you need to make sure the instructor has this reported. And also there's first aid kits in every shop so minor inju injuries can be um, treated. 
Now that you've listened and watched this video, uh, we'd like you to uh, complete these questions and bring them to your machine shop instructor uh, at the beginning of lab. Uh, he or she will instruct you exactly what you need to do, whether they're handwritten or typed. Uh, so please ask your lab instructor uh, what the proper procedures will be for your homework questions from the safety videos, and all videos for that matter. All right, so here's the, the questions to uh, just see if you have watched this video properly and understand it. Uh, question number one says, if a student wears prescription eyeglasses, when do they also need to wear safety glasses over their glasses in the, in the shop or in the machine shop? The second question is, list all the reasons given in this video why a, sh a student should not wear a hoodie while in the machine shop. Third question, who must be present at all times when a student is operating a machine in an MCC machine shop? And then follow that with answering, what will happen to you if you operate a machine without this person present? Four, what must, be, what must you do if you observe a broken or worn part on a machine? And five, what must you do if you sustain an injury in the machine shop? And please explain why you must do this. So these are the five questions for video one for safety. Um, please complete your answers and hand them in to your machine shop instructor.